Hi everybody, it's Heather with Little Bird Live. How are you all? Nice to see you all. It's been a while since I've made a video, but today I thought I would get Freya out of her box. I've not done a dress up with her yet. As you can see, she's still in the clothes that I purchased her in. She's absolutely adorable and I absolutely love this outfit. So I'll probably keep her in this for a little while because I just really love these colours. I think they go so beautifully with her gorgeous grey hair. It's so pretty. And this hat is adorable. And when I was... Um, looking at it the other day and I'm trying to do a bit of a D stash this is like the, the background behind some of the videos I've done recently and start to ramble off in a minute um, I'm trying to get my craft room tidy and um, it is relatively tidy but I use this space to run my business so it has to be really really efficient in order for me to be able to run my business to make the items I need to make and to make a living and the problem is I love Blythe so much and I do make and sell clothes for Blythe but that's not my main living that's just sort of a, a side thing so um, the Blythe however uh, as you probably know if you're watching this channel you may well be a Blythe or doll collector it sort of takes over doesn't it and um, while I'm making a living I'm trying to make these other things that I make um, in order to pay my mortgage feed the children that sort of thing and obviously um, take care of my Blythe habit as well um, I accumulate more and more things with the intention of doing stuff with it like for example making more items and, and putting them on Etsy but I don't have time to do it so I accumulate more and more it becomes more and more addictive um, I have more and more items sort of stacked up because I run a creative business anyway I have an awful lot of stuff in this room and um, I just really really need to de-stash I've just got to get it more efficient I got, I've got to the point where I'm quite happy that I can get to everything I need to but I could be more efficient and I think the Blythe stuff because I don't have time to do what I want to do in my head I've got all these projects um, but I don't have the time to do them um, so they end up sort of amassing in corners and then getting in my way so that was a very long story but the idea is I'm trying to get through some of the projects and try to get through some of the materials and um, get rid of them because I just don't have time to do the Blythe stuff uh, in the way that I want to so I've just got I've really got to downscale that side of things and get rid of some other things from the craft room too so that's why I'm sort of uploading some of these DIY videos for Blythe and um, I may well have another push at the shop and put some put some more things on there if I get a chance but to be honest with you it's just really having to take a back seat because of all the other things that I do that's the problem with being a crafter you see you want to do everything can't always do everything and to be efficient and feed my children I have got to make the other side of the business that earns the money I've got to make that a priority really so hard truths anyway but today I'm going to have a little bit of fun and I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of ideas that I've had because I've been putting these project ideas into little bins um, so that I can now show them to you and then I can get rid of the items and I don't have to worry about it. I feel like I've done my duty then. I feel like I've done my bit. I've, I've had some fun um, and that idea then can go out of my head and I don't have to uh, keep it banging around in there. If you know what I mean. If you're a Blythe collector, you're a crafter, chances are you sort of know where I'm coming from on there. Anyway, so today as I'm blabbering on, what I was going to do is show you how to make things out of old sweaters. The idea came to me, um, well, years ago, and I started making items for Blythe's out of old sweaters because I just love using wool. I love felted wool. I love felting. Um, I love cashmere. Um, I love wool. Um, and I love the way it feels and how the fact that it's so easy to work with. Um, I love the different colours that these items come in. I feel really good because I'm upcycling something, so it's not getting thrown away, it's getting used for something. And it's nice and easy to work with in the main. So there's lots of things that you can make with for dolls out of old sweaters. Especially if it's sort of a felted sweater, because it means it's easier to sew, it's not going to fray in the same way. Now, uh, talking of Freya, here she is, and she's got this gorgeous hat on, which is not made from an old sweater. This came um, with her and it's actually a knitted sweater uh, a knitted hat rather now I don't knit I can knit but I'm not very good at it and it's one of those crafts that I really I've had to put to one side because I can't do everything but this gorgeous hat um, it's lovely and stretching it's sort of a long beanie but you can make something like this really easily from an old sweater if you've got one 
so I'm going to um, pause the video now and I'll do a couple of segments so that you can see um, the different hats that you can make using old sweaters so be back in a moment okay first idea if you've already got a hat that you like and I love this one because it's so long and floppy um, and it's the right size for my doll so for the sake of measuring all you do is get the hat and you want a piece of paper now I use vellum um, paper when I'm making patterns um, but it's really easy what you're going to do is you're going to fold it <coughs> in half this saves having to do the same on both sides and you are going to draw around the hat but you only want half of it because it's going to make uh, a full hat so we're just literally going to draw Don't panic if it's not perfect. There we go. So that gives us just a general shape. Now bear in mind, we're going to cut this out, but we're actually going to sew around the side. So what we're going to do is just add a tiny bit to the edge. So we've got a seam allowance. So just bear that in mind when you're putting it. Now if you're hemming uh, the underside then you'll need to add a little bit there as well. But if you've got a felted sweater you don't need to do that. So what we've got there then is what looks a little bit like a gnome hat and we can then take that and get a piece of sweater, a piece of felted sweater, so this is an arm piece and we'll fold that over because we're going to want two pieces and we'll just make sure that it fits on the sweater. That's not. I don't think that's going to be quite big enough because I've cut, I've made quite a large uh, just a, there we go. I might have to make that slightly shorter with this particular piece I can get another piece, I have so many sweaters but basically if you find a piece that you can cut out that will cover two pieces of this pattern and then what you're going to do is you can pin it on or I use um, a spray adhesive that's removable put that on there and then cut around both pieces of sweater so that you end up with two pieces that look like this cut out of the sweater and then all you're going to do literally is so run up the sides of both of them and all the way around the other side and you'll end up with a doll hat and I'll show you in a moment okay it turns out you have to have two hands for sewing um, so you can't actually video holding a phone i'm sure you probably knew that already um, so i did attempt to video it well that was ridiculous wasn't it i thought if i'm going in a straight line it'll be all right no no it's not uh, so i made a bit of a hash of that it wasn't too bad uh, but you don't have footage of me sewing it not that you need it anyway but basically i just i used a sewing machine just because i wanted to do this one quickly so i've sewn all the way around the edge of the um, hat so I'll just snip those threads and we'll turn it the right way out and see what it looks like let's just get rid of those now like I say it doesn't have to be perfect it helps if you've got both hands if you're using a sewing machine or do it by hand if you prefer that I would do normally to be honest with you I prefer that sort of thing it's just it's quick being quick that's what I was trying to do today right then so I'll turn that the right way out now I haven't hemmed the bottom but you can do if you want um, mine's not particularly neat at the bottom but it isn't fraying because it's um, an old woolen jumper high warp content so we've got what we've got is like a sort of um, gnome hat type as well sort of mitten shaped isn't it um, and what you can do as with the other hat is sort of turn over the 
um, edge like that roll it over and then if you wanted it to stay like that you can just add a couple of stitches by hand onto the edges like that so there you go now I'm going to wash this one because I've used um, the uh, glue um, so I'll just remove that I'll just hand wash it and remove that so let's see what it looks like on Freya sort of tease it out that's a good thing about wool you can sort of tease it out especially when you wash it again away in her box again bless her so she didn't get knocked off when I was sewing so here we go so this is the first hat just put those to the side and here we go so that's hat number one <laughs> little gnome hat so these are great for making little Christmas hats now obviously you can make that much shorter if you made it shorter she would have a sort of short beanie um, you can flop it over um, but it does look cute doesn't it so there you go, so that's hat number one, just using um, the flat pieces of old sweater and literally cutting your own pattern from a hat that you've already got or from a shape that you like. So there you go, there's number one. Right then, next. Hi again, right, idea for hat number two is again a sweater and this is a felted sweater and it came from my mum, so that's really nice, out of her charity bag, so it's nice and free. And this one happens to have it, these gorgeous sleeves that are, I don't know whether you can see it's got some texture on the sleeves it's sort of been sort of, it looks slightly gathered and I think it's the way that it's been knitted and felted um, now the good thing about this particular sweater and a lot of sweaters is that they are the absolute perfect size the armholes are to um, fit onto a doll's head so you can see there onto this particular doll's head blithe heads are often the perfect size to fit into a sweater sleeve so that makes it really easy for us because this has been slightly felted already because of the type of wool that it is synthetics won't felt um, a mix of synthetic and natural fibers natural wool might felt but usually synthetic fibers won't um, that's in my experience um, but this is a high uh, quantity wool um, cardigan so it's actually felted slightly which means when I cut it although you can still see some of the fibre it's it's sort of felted together really well so it's not going to um, unrove when I cut it so what I can do for this particular hat is use the sleeve literally just cut across whatever length you want it to be and then you can literally just sew across the top um, I would turn it inside out to do that because then when you turn it the right way around the seam will be on the inside and I'll show you what I mean in a minute uh, and there's another alternative because we've got two sleeves what you can do is cut across the top and instead of just sewing all the way across the top while it's inside out you sew around the edge and then gather it so that it becomes more of a sort of uh, a circular sort of style at the top so I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but we've got two sleeves, so that will make two lovely hats for Bly.
Okay then, so I finished sewing around the edge of the uh, second hat and I've gathered it and um, and then I've sewn a few stitches on the inside just to make sure there's no hole in the middle. Now you can leave it like that if you like or you could add a pom-pom or a little stalk if you wanted to or some flowers or um, beads, whatever you like, but it looks quite n nice like that. Um, but I think a pom-pom would look nice, but for now I'm just going to leave it like that. So I've anchored it inside and I'll cut off the extra thread. So if you do that in the same colour thread as the hat, then you're not going to see the stitching. So there you go. So there's one little beanie. Now the other one that I did on the sewing machine, I literally just sewed across the top. I did it in a slightly um, curved way. I'm going to just snip off the extra thread and I don't lose that, I've got a tendency to lose my needles. So then we'll just cut off that extra thread and then I'm going to just cut that closer to the stitching because we don't need the extra ball. Um, turn that the right way around and we've got another beanie but a slightly different style. So that's got more of a sort of square look to it, square top. So um, let's just grab Freya. Let's see what she looks like in those. So here's the stitch top. There you can see it's more of a square top. You can cut that shorter if you'd wanted to uh, and make it closer to her head. That's quite cute. Oops, so my thread's gone over. And the second hat that's gathered round, and this is my favourite style, I like this one. And that makes a lovely beanie. And I think if we add a little pom pom on there, that'll look super cute. So there you go. So there are two more little hats from a sweater. So on to the next one. And this is the third hat. This is a different sort of sweater. This has actually got shorter sleeves. It is cashmere, so it's lovely and soft and has spelted very slightly. Um, but this one's actually got elasticated ends to the sleeves. And fortunately, it's the perfect size for Blythe again. So Freya can pop that sleeve on. And you can see, just by looking at her there, it makes a lovely sort of um, beret style because it sort of pillows out. Because they've put elastic around the edge of the sleeve, it actually sort of poofs out slightly so that um, you get that beret look. So when we cut across the top here, what we can do, again, as in the other hat, is sew around the edge and gather it so that it pulls in. And then we can um, gather it in and it can make a lovely sort of beret, slouchy beret look to it. Again, we've got two sleeves, so as long as you're fabric doesn't have holes in or stains, sometimes they do, but you can patch those. Um, that will make two lovely hats for Blythe. So I'll show you the outcome of those in a moment. But I love that, I love that colour. I think she'll be wearing one of those hats soon.
Okay, so here's the other hat, and it's been sewn around the edge, gathered, and then the yarn, the stitching is sort of pulled in so that uh, it's well concealed. And let's try that on. There we go. Oh, now that happens to be my favourite. How adorable is that? Absolutely gorgeous. So again, you could put um, flower on there, pom-pom on there, anything you like if you wanted to conceal that little bit there. But it looks really cute anyway, so I think that's a really good hat. Um, and I'm quite pleased with the way that's come out. That's super. Now, of course, you can make the same style of hat by using the flat um, circular piece of fabric and by um, adding your own elastic to the edges, by hemming the edges and adding elastic, and you'd end up with the same sort of effect. Um, so I'll be doing that next, but um, for now, I think that looks really nice. I'm really pleased with that, so there you go. So there's several hats all done. Okay, on to the next one then. Okay, the final style hat we've got today and how to make this out of a sweater. We're going to use um, the back portion of the sweater because it's a nice big expanse of material. And what we're going to do is make a sort of beret style hat. Um, so little Freya here, um, her head circumference, if you get a tape measure and measure around her head, I don't have a tape measure to hand, but it's round about 10 and a half inches all the way around. So a piece of elastic, we'd need a piece of elastic that we cut round about, um, it would have to be at least 10 and a half inches plus a couple of inches so that we can tie it. And because what we're going to do is cut a large circle of this fabric, we are then going to make a uh, hem on the edge of the circle in order to make a tube and then we're going to feed in the elastic, the piece of elastic and tie it and that will then make a sort of shower cap beret for the Blythe doll. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Right then, on to our third hat, which should hopefully be a beret. Uh, now, I've not done this before, so it's a bit of trial and error. I've got a 12 by 12 piece of card, so what I'm going to do, because I haven't got a circle that's 12 by 12, I'm just going to cut myself a pattern. I reckon it's going to be round about 12 inches diameter, um, this circle, but we'll see. I, th I could be wrong. So I'm folding it in four. I'm just going to make a rough circle by going from corner to corner. There we go. So I reckon if I cut that and then gather, I might cut it slightly larger actually. So if I stick this onto my uh, fabric, when I found a piece, then I'll cut slightly larger, sort of around the edge, so that I've got enough space to hem, and we'll see how that works. Okay, so there we go, we've cut round. Uh, it isn't very even, but I think we'll cope. And what I'm going to do now is um, hem a sort of a channel around the outside. So I'm gonna turn it in and then stitch 
around the outside. So I'll remove this and, um, and start to hem. Okay. I don't know whether I should pin. I can never be bothered to pin, to be honest with you. So I will probably just sew it straight all the way round like that. You could do that on the sewing machine if you wanted to or by hand. So let's give that a go and remember to leave one part of it open because what we're going to do is take a piece of elastic round about, well it's got to be at least ten and a half inches to go around the doll's head and you want to be able to tie it comfortably so you really want it to be like eleven and a, oh well, twelve and a half inches I would say. Um, so that you can tie it easily um, and then uh, that will go around the edge and it will pull the hat in um, and be the edge of the hat if you see what I mean bubbling on right I'm going to do that now right then I'm back I've sewn all the way around the edge I've done a terrible job it's not very neat at all I started off on the sewing machine and soon realized actually that's not very good it's stretchy fabric and it's really difficult to do um, while it may be easier to sort of do with something like cotton, it's so difficult to keep it um, onto the machine in a, in a decent fashion so it's going to sew a neat line all the way around. I'm afraid I haven't got time for messing around with it so I very very quickly backstitched all the way around and just left a gap just there so that I can thread the elastic in. So what we're going to do now is cut about, I reckon about 12 inches because we need ten and a half inches to go around Blythe's head, so I'm going to cut twelve and a half inches. And what I usually do is use a um, children's needle to thread this elastic onto, and then thread it through um, and pull it all the way through um, a little tube that's been created. So I'll just go and get one of those needles and do that now. So here we go. And I'm going to tie that on to stop it from falling out. And I'm starting the. There's the gap. Gosh, it's really rubbish. It's winky. Right, so we're starting the gap, and I'm just going to push my needle through. It's just one of those children's needles, it's plastic so you're not going to jab yourself. But it's nice and long so it goes all the way through. You can use a, um, a safety pin for this as well, which I think is probably the traditional way. So hold on to that end so that you don't lose it in the little tube. Now if I was going to do this properly, I would probably have surged the edge and then um, hand sewn it up so that you don't get... Um, you don't get that very bad wavy poor sewing line that I've done. But I was in a rush trying to get this done. Oh, poking the needle out. I do hope this works. And if you wanted to do a nice professional job you could line this as well couldn't you? I shall not be doing that. Because we're after quick, easy, nearly there. In order to hide some of the really poor sewing, you could add some pretty seam binding. You know that lovely sort of crinkly vintage seam binding, add some of that to the edge um, and just sew that on while before you put the um, put, before you put the elastic on so that it crinkles up really nicely and that would hide the uh, the sewing which to be honest with you is hidden anyway because of the uh, the way it crinkles up but if you really don't like that I did it in a different colour so you could see as well but ordinarily you'd pick the same colour thread as your fabric and if you put some nice crinkly seam binding that would totally hide any mistakes or shoddy workmanship like I have done today. Right so there we go so that's um, all gathered up you can see it's sort of like a shower cap type effect so what I'm going to do now is tie that off 
Well, I know that I did two inches more than I needed, so I've got a good two inches to be able to, oops, to be able to tie. But it's okay if, it, if you go over that a little bit and just um, make it a bit smaller because it obviously it's elasticated, so there's loads of give in it. Okay, so that's nice and tight. I'll just do one more knot. And you could, of course, if you wanted to, you could sew that to keep that nice and neat so you don't have the knot, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just knotting it. There we go, snip it off. Okay, maybe that's nice and tight. Seems okay. So then just thread that into the, the sheath that you've made. Sew up the hole. And hey presto, we have a lovely little beret hat. Let's see what it looks like on. I'm going to sew the hole up now because we can get an idea what it looks like anyway. Right, where are you, Brea? There we go. There she is. somewhat so there's a little bit of fun to just fit that on there and there you go so this is sort of a beret look you can put it at a jaunty angle to one side oh very cute how lovely and you can see the poor stitching there can't you because I used a different colour see there but obviously if you use the same colour you wouldn't be able to see that and also if you had some gorgeous seam binding on there with flowers or something like that uh, you wouldn't notice it either so there you go to jaunty angle so there is the last hat you could also pop a little pom-pom on there or maybe a little stalk um, to emphasize that top part uh, but doesn't that look cute so out of um, old sweaters we've made several different style hats i hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video I hope it didn't go on too much and um, I'll add some pictures at the end of uh, the dolls wearing the different style of hat and possibly pop some on Instagram as well so thanks ever so much for joining me I hope you got something out of that it's one more project off my desk so thank you very much and um, great to see you all thanks for joining me remember to subscribe if you haven't done already and you like to see dolly videos um, I've got a few more how to's coming up um, I want to do some more really easy dresses um, and clothes for Blythe because um, I think we, you know, we get our dolls home and we want to make things nice and quickly and sometimes we don't have sewing machines or the time to be hand sewing loads of stuff so um, hopefully I'll be able to upload some new videos soon showing some easy DIYs for Blythe. So um, remember to click the notification bell if you want to be told when I next upload and uh, I hope you all have some dolly fun. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Bye.